Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be answering one of the questions that I get asked uh, like a ton of times via email, social networks, or the YouTube comments. And that is, what is the best Linux distribution? Now, as you can already tell, that's an extremely loaded question and an extremely generalized question. But uh, if you take a look at my inbox, I can guarantee I've got probably more than about 500 emails asking the same thing. And in regards to comments, I've been getting this like since the beginning uh, of the channel. And that's because this channel is based around cybersecurity, pen testing, uh, and also Linux. And uh, for that very reason, in my videos where I use Linux, I get a lot of questions asking me, hey, what distribution are you using? Would you recommend it? What's the best distribution? You know, I get these type of questions related to the distribution. and. To, to be honest, I can understand where they're coming from, but I also don't understand why they're being asked because uh, a distribution is is not really an important thing. Now, let, let, let me explain this. When it comes down to the way they are built and the way they and, and where, when a uh, distribution has a philosophy or an ideology, then it's important because it, it essentially affects how you interact with the system, how you maintain it, so on and so forth. A good example of that is Arch Linux, right, which I'm a huge fan of and for obvious reasons. Uh, but you can pretty much watch the Arch video or my Arch installation video if you're interested in that. But my uh, the goal of this video is to give you or to point you into the right direction regarding Linux and how you should view distributions as opposed to looking for a definitive answer when it comes down to a Linux distribution, right? So I'm currently on a website called distrowatch.com. Now this is the website that I would typically point any beginner to. And the reason I do this is so that I don't have to answer that question, right? What is the best Linux distribution? And that's because DistroWatch has actually done this. Now, this is something that I'm not a fan of because this, uh, you can actually see it right over here on the, uh, on the right hand side of the web page. They have a page hit ranking. And it's interesting that they call it that, but essentially what this means is this is a, uh, a list of all the popular distributions uh, rated in order from the most popular to the least popular that currently have their distribution submitted on uh, distrowatch.com. Uh, now, you can also see the wording that they use, and by no means am I criticizing DistroWatch, but uh, it's something that I'm not a fan of because it can actually perpetuate or promote a distribution if it you know, got a surge in likes and it, it's, it sort of rose, uh, it rose a bit higher on this list, but uh, that, that's a story for another day. But the, the, the crux, of the question here is you want to use Linux, right? And you're, you're sort of looking at all of these options because that's what Linux is, it's freedom. You're looking at all of these options that are available to you and it can be quite overwhelming because you're, you, you, what you're looking to do is you're looking to pick one distribution that will work for you perfectly and it'll be exactly what you're looking for. It's going to be the best experience of your life. And the answer to that or my response to that is that's not what Linux is about. And I don't think you're ever going to have or install a distribution where you say, you know what, this is the perfect distribution for me. Uh, in my opinion, if you want a perfect distribution, use Arch Linux, you can pretty much build what you want the way you want. But again, as I said, that's a story for another day. Um, so going back to the question, I usually point them back to this website. And the reason I do it is because it sorts these distributions out uh, quite well in regards to the audience they target. Let me explain that. So if you take a look at the top 10 distributions, these are all general purpose distributions. Now, this doesn't mean they can be used by experts, by any specialists. What I'm saying is their main I idea, their philosophy, their design development philosophy, except apart from Debian, I would say, and Manjaro to a certain extent, is to, to sort of uh, widen their, their audience. Uh, and, and that means they have to make it as user-friendly as possible, make things uh, flow uh, as smooth as possible, make their distribution as stable as possible, so on and so forth. After the top 10 list, you get the other distributions like OpenSUSE, which is actually dropped. So that's quite surprising. Antex, KD, Neon, CentOS, Arco Linux, Arch. Uh, and, and that's where you start finding the more um, uh, user-centric based distributions which is very, very interesting. So if someone came up to me in real life, uh, a friend, a colleague, a peer, and they asked me, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a developer, I'm a penetration tester, and uh, the use of Linux is quite prevalent in the industry. 
Uh, what distribution would you recommend for a beginner, for someone who has never had experience with Linux or maybe have a little bit of experience with Linux? I would point them to the top 10 list and I would tell them, try every one of them, apart from a few here that, you know, might be a, a bit cliche at this point. So I would tell them, try out uh, MX Linux, Manjaro, Mint, Debian, Ubuntu, so that they can understand that no distribution, first of all, is perfect, right? They, they, they really need to understand this. And that's something you understand as someone who, who, who has used Linux for a very long time, is that a distribution is really is really a trivial thing because it really doesn't affect how you, you go about setting up your system. If you, if you have used for Linux, uh, if you have used Linux for quite a while, you know that the first thing you do after you install a Linux distribution is you start configuring it uh, to meet what you need in regards to productivity, your key bindings, your desktop manager, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Linux that way is and should be tailored to every specific user. And, and you, you'll actually see this when, when I point uh, students towards Ubuntu, for example, or I point developers towards Ubuntu because it meets the criteria of what they're looking for. What happens is after five months, they'll come, they'll come back to me and they say, oh, yeah, I loved Ubuntu. I love this, this thing, this, this whole Linux thing. Um, I would love to, to get into it a bit, bit more. I would like to know how it works, but I'm having a few. I don't like how this desktop environment is working. I don't like how GNOME is, is working. I would like to get more out of this, uh, out of Linux. And that's when I start pointing them towards, uh, to, you know, towards the areas of various desktop environments. Uh, various editors that they can start using because that's what Linux is all about. It really has nothing to do with the distribution. A distribution is just a toolkit or a collection of tools that is supposed to uh, to, to appeal to a particular uh, user base or an audience on top of the Linux kernel, right? So as long as you're running the Linux kernel, you can make Linux whatever you want it to be. And I can answer that question, what the best Linux distribution is. That's a very, very, uh, I won't say... Uh, a very, very uh, incorrect question to ask when you could be asking, how can I set up Linux the, you know, the best for me instead of, uh, instead of looking for one that is already set up for you? Because you can actually see the logic in that and, and where it actually fails because you're, you're essentially trying to ask a company to build an operating system that's going to work for you. And there, there certainly are. There certainly are distributions that are trying to build uh, a system or an operating system that is as comfortable for uh, the the audience that that they are trying to target uh, or they are trying to provide this uh, this distribution to. An example of this are the penetration testing distributions like Parrot and Kali, which are the two top big players right now, right? And so many, um, I get many questions of uh, you know students asking me which one is better, Kali and Parrot, and I tell them. The, and you can actually go back to the comments where I say this. I tell them the same thing. Try them. Uh, you, you need to try them both out. Uh, you need to understand something, though. The only thing different, uh, you, you know, for, for, from, from uh, the, only, the only thing different or the only thing that separates them is that they essentially are, uh, they, they have different desktop environments. Uh, one may be faster than the other because it's optimized well. One may have driver issues. But the key thing to understand here is the only thing they offer you are the pen testing tools on top of the Linux distribution, right? So once you understand that, you can easily set up your own distribution based on whatever uh, base you, you decide to use, whether it be uh, Ubuntu, Debian, Arch, which is my personal favorite. And you can then only install what you need because the top 10 distributions are, are, are pretty bloated with the exception of Fedora, I would say, in my opinion. Um, and Manjaro, but uh, you know, with, with Manjaro, you can actually customize uh, your installation. You can do that for, for the, the, the rest of the distributions like Debian and Ubuntu, but I'm talking about a standard install. Uh, it, it, it comes with, with a lot of bloat, and that's something that you want to stay away from, or you will be moving away from as you become more experienced with Linux. So what I would say to conclude uh, you know, to conclude my answer to this question is uh, you need to try out all the distributions and you need to understand that there is no best Linux distribution out there that is waiting for you to actually download and install. You have to decide what you want from your Linux system, what you need to, you need to test out the various desktop environments uh, or window managers, find out what works for you 
experiment. You need to experiment with what you need for your productivity or for your workflow. Uh, you need to take uh, you need to take a look at the editors you like to use. You need to take a look at a lot of stuff that you know will tie into your overall experience for years to come. And that can that can evolve, of course. But the whole idea is to understand what you need and then start building towards that, as opposed you know to looking for a solution or a one in all solution that exists out there. And through this entire process, you learn more about how Linux works. You learn more about how to troubleshoot your system and how to maintain your system, because those are all vital aspects of uh, of running Linux as your operating system. So I know this question was a bit, uh, I, I went on, on various tangents during the answer, but again, uh, I would like to make these type of videos so that I can explain these questions a little bit more and clarify a few things because it's much better than answering 100 emails, uh, you know, that are trying to cover or are trying to, uh, to, to actually explain or answer one question. So hopefully this, uh, this, this video explains uh, what I was trying to point out and what I personally think a Linux distribution is. Uh, do let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I would love to hear your feedback and uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video.